Hi, my name is Łukasz and this video is created for my blog Enter Falcon. Today I want to show you how to use subcases in your analysis done in FIMAP with NX Nastron. The model I am using was used previously on some of my videos, but this actually doesn't matter a lot. As long as you have a model, then you set to go. So I go to previously defined analysis and if you define the geometrically nonlinear analysis, usually the setup looks something like that. Uh, you have the large displacement selected and some other checks as well, perhaps. And here is the main field where you set up the analysis. So I have chosen that I will divide the load applied by 50. And that the maximum iterations will be 5. I'm using arc length method, modified Wix algorithm to be pre precise. Uh, I don't wish to adjust arc length and I allowed for 150 increments. Okay. So this is the typical analysis. But today I want to use subcases. So instead of using the master request and conditions, I will click here for no case defined and click new one. This is the first ID and I will call it one, which means that I will apply 100% of the load I wish to do because at the beginning I wish to have only one subcase. So as you can see, all the settings are gone because this is something completely new. This is a new subcase and what is more important if you define a subcase it will actually override whichever settings you may have done previously. So I will go with 50, why not? And here I don't want to adjust arc length but I will go with maximum of 100 increments to speed things up a bit. Usually I press OK at this stage, but you have to remember that this is a completely new case from the FEMAP standpoint, so we have to define everything, including that there are boundary conditions and loads. We already have that defined in the analysis, but for this subcase it was unknown. Also, for whatever reason, if you start to define a subcase, FIMAP will assume that you are not interested in output data of any type. Usually there is a generic form which is filled if you click a normal analysis, but, but for whatever reason for subcases this is off. So I would be interested in displacement, constraint force, forces, stresses, strain. I wish to have element corner results and print and process. Now I'm done. So, as you can see, there are somewhat two types of nonlinear options. The first one is in master request and conditions, and this one will be completely overwritten. I can do like one and one, so only one increment on time step. It doesn't matter because I have a case. Well, it's described as case, the Nastran term is subcase, and here is the new definition. So why does it matter to do it this way? Uh, well, there are certain advantages. For instance, if you would like to restart the analysis later on, you actually cannot restart an analysis that, that does not have at least one subcase, because you are restarting from a certain subcase. If you have none, you have no place to restart from which means that even though I have only one case, one subcase, it's still helping me if I would like to restart the analysis later on, and there will be a video about restarting analysis for sure. For now, I will run the analysis to show you how it will work. Uh, I will simply measure the time and see how well it moves here and then when it's done, I will think about how to implement second subcase to show you why it actually makes sense. As you can see, the analysis is running for two minutes now, 
and we are somewhere around 0 0.6 of the total applied load. And you can also see that the load factor is actually decreasing, meaning that the capacity was met and our model lost stability somewhere around this region. It will, however, take some additional time for the solver to go through all the increments that I asked the solver to do. So, the analysis is completed now. It lasted for almost a bit more than nine minutes. And as you can see, the 100 steps were made. I allowed myself to make a stability plot for this analysis. And we can see that somewhere around the total force of 24 kilonewtons, the capacity is lost. And the empty circle on the chart shows the points and at which solver actually solve the problem. So here the circles are a bit more dense. This means that the solver had more problems and they were close together. But here the solver simply moved with the speed that I gave it to the solver at the beginning. So I've divided the load by 50 and this is like each increment was 1 50th of the load. Well, a bit less to be exact because the arc length method actually makes funny things with the load increment. But it's more or less um, 1 divided by the defined number of uh, parameter needs. And this means basically that for a perfectly linear problem, we've made almost 40 steps which were completely unnecessary. We could simply calculate this one and move here already because this is linear at this stage. So one can say, okay, we could simply define that we want to adjust arc length. But the problem with adjusting arc length during the analysis is that if you do so, you will notice that at the, be the beginning the step is small, the solver sees that the problem is linear and increases the speed. And since the speed is getting higher and higher, which means that the load increment is higher and higher, then the solver will have huge convergence problem at this point, because the step is very high, there is only so much you can do to reduce it, and this is obviously a, a way to approach a a problem like that, but I prefer a more simplistic approach. I will simply divide the load to, let's say, this point and later on and say, okay, this first part I will move in two or three steps only and then I will make the small division I want to have. This way I don't have to be worried about what the uh, automatic adjustment of arc length will do to the load increment in the point in which I am the mo most interested in. So in order to change that, what I've just explained, and divide the load, we have to do a few things. First of all, we need to have a second load case which have smaller load. We can define it once more, but there is a simpler way to do it. In model load and combine, I want a new set which will be called 0.5 for 50% of the load. I want this load case with factor 0.5 and it's done. Okay, And as you can see there's a second one, 0.5 means 0.5 for actual load. So now I'm going to man manage and I will copy the subcase to the analysis I am performing. So I have two cases now, and both have all the same parameters. So since I copied it, this one also have entire load, boundary conditions, and defi defined output request, which is very important. Many times I have forgot to actually insert anything here. The analysis went through and there were no outcomes whatsoever. So it's important to remember about this one. So here I will change the name because it's 05 now. And I was dividing the load by 50. The, the first half of the load I will divide only by three. So three, four steps. That's everything I'm interested in. 
Oh, the maximum number of increment is not very important because I will reach the load actually. So there is no need to worry about when to stop the analysis. I have to change the load here. This is important. And I'm okay. The only thing else that changes is actually that I should divide the load here by 25. This is because I've divided the load in half and this set of parameters for case 2 controls only half of the load, the half between 0, 5 and 1, which means 50% of the load and 100%. Since all the load was divided by 50, if I wish to have the same conditions, then the rest of the load, so the 50%, should be divided only by 25. And also, I will reduce the maximum number of increments. Well, here it gets a bit tricky, because I didn't actually count how many increments were performed previously to go up to the 50% of the load, I'm unsure. I will guess it was somewhere around 40, which means that here 60 will suffice. And we will see what will happen. So everything is set and done. And I can launch the analysis once more. This time uh, we can watch for a short while to see what is happening. You see, this is the subcase one. The first step was already around 33%. Then the second one was in 60 something. Well, usually arc length, as I said before, reduces the amount a bit. So it's it happens like that. And we are already in subcase two, which means all the steps we had to wait for two minutes are already done. And uh, this also will be something funny because from zero to one, you can see on the screen right now here, from zero to one, this is actually 50% of the load 100% of the load. This is 50% because we are in subcase 2. And you can see that already the system is failing and it will actually go below zero in just a second. Well, actually it might take a while. Uh, it will go below zero because the stability path, as you can see here, 50 is somewhere here. And it goes under, which means to negative values from subcase to standpoint. And you can see we're almost there already. And yes, we are in negative values. And this is completely fine, as long as you understand what is going on. The only problem with um, the subcases in this approach is that you need to be cautious when you analyze outcomes. You need to be aware what does a subcase mean. And for instance, if you, if you wish to uh, make stability charts, as I did, it is better to actually use global force, global reaction force, or something like that, instead of set value. Because set value, uh, in this case, can be tricky to use. It's still doable, but simply requires thinking. So let's wait for the analysis so I can show you how the new stability path looks like. So. The analysis has finished after five and a half minutes, and it have made 63 uh, steps. So, some time ago, I have created a macro um, script that actually does a stability path for me, so I don't have to go through charting all the time. And I am doing this right now to obtain the stability path for the second part. So I have to choose here which outcomes are of interest. So the second geometrical nonlinear analysis is important. And after a second, yep, it's done. And we can see here that the steps are only few on this line, so we didn't waste time on computing. And if I take the old graph, well, Excel does funny things for charts, so actually look at, this is our one, and if I knew, it changed color. Uh, you can see that 
the outcome is exactly the same, the values are the same. We even calculated a bit more in the post-critical zone and still we saved almost 50% of time. So subcases really help in that regard. One can obviously say that it sounds really nice, but you can never be sure at which point you can say that this will be linear before making the analysis beforehand. And, well, it's partially true. And from time to time, uh, you will simply launch the first analysis and then all the other analysis you are doing for the model will be much faster. So this is the, the best approach, I think. But also, from time to time, when the model is very big, I set up several subcases with increased loads and not so many steps, and I simply search for uh, the subcase in which the convergence won't be met. And I know that something there is a miss, and I can then look at it more carefully. But for today, this is the way how you define a subcase in FEMAP. So basically, it's a bit counterintuitive because if you have an analysis without any subcases, you need to click on non-case defined and click new. And then you'll have the, the dialogue to actually create a subcase. Uh, I think it's quite counterintuitive in the FEMAP how you do it, but uh, it's a very good tool to know. So I hope you'll find this useful. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, subcases are also used when you when you wish to restart analysis and this is something we'll discuss later on so have a good day and thank you for watching bye